So you've gotten tired of listening to all of your friends and co-workers talking about Game of Thrones and having nothing to contribute to the conversation. You finally watched the show and you liked it. You were probably a little confused at times, but you liked it nevertheless. And now you're ready to delve into the books to learn a little bit more about this universe so you have even more to contribute to those geeky Game of Thrones conversations and you're not as confused while watching the show. Maybe you want to understand particular plot lines a little bit better. Maybe you want to get to know some of the characters a little bit better. Maybe you just want to know some character names so you stop calling this guy Argus Filch from Harry Potter. Well, if that's what you're ready to do, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to read the Game of Thrones books without getting lost in the details or becoming too frustrated and giving up. Right here, right now, coming at ya. Hello to all my wildlings, brothers of the Night's Watch, and lords and ladies of Westeros. Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. So with the 8th and final season of Game of Thrones set to air in April 2019, I decided that I wanted, in the spirit of that, to do a Game of Thrones related video because I am so stoked I cannot wait to see what happens. So you want to get into the Game of Thrones books, but you're not really sure where to start. You probably have gone to the bookstore and you've seen so many different editions of these wonderful books written by George R.R. R. Martin, and you're not really sure which one to pick up, or maybe you've already picked up the books, and you've just maybe gotten frustrated and given up because there are just so many bleeding details, you've gotten so confused and just frustrated with it. So if either one of these scenarios is your situation, I'm gonna show you the best way to get in to these wonderful books and this wonderful universe with minimal frustration. So I'd like to start off today by going over the various editions that are available for this series of books. Hopefully with the information here, I can help you decide which edition of these books is going to be right for you. Before we get into the different editions that are available of this book and how to effectively read this series, I just wanted to get one thing clear. The Game of Thrones books are actually not called the Game of Thrones books. They are informally known as the Game of Thrones books just because of the hit TV series. As you can see, only the first book is called A Game of Thrones. The other books all have individual titles. They are Clash of Kings, The Storm of Swords, a Feast for Crows, and A Dance with Dragons, which I am currently reading right now. Um, I've actually been putting off reading this book. This series is actually not finished. There are actually uh, two more books that are supposed to be coming out, but the author, George R. R. Martin, has been egregiously slow in writing the Winds of Winter, which is supposed to be the next book, and uh, A Dream of Spring, which is supposed to be the final installment in the series. I will be waiting around until that book comes out, and I will be one of the first in line to go and buy it at the bookstore. So Mr. Martin, if you are watching, we understand, take your time. But anyway, I'm getting just a little tangential, and I apologize for that. That is a topic for another video. From here on in, you're going to be hearing me refer to these books not as the Game of Thrones books, but as the Song of Ice and Fire series, because collectively these books are known as a Song of Ice and Fire. The first edition of these books that I would like to show you are the mass market paperback editions, and this is obviously going to be the most economical way to read the Song of Ice and Fire series. You can get all of these books in a box set, and they're relatively cheap, uh, my only caveat is these books are very cheaply produced as well. Uh, I, I actually had, this is how I first got into A Song of Ice and Fire. I had these books and uh, my first read through of A Song of Ice and Fire was with these mass mar market paperback editions. And they, they just, they're really cheap. I am very meticulous on how I care for my books. And even with how careful I am when I read my books, th they're still creases and, and dog ears and it was just, they just really kind of fall apart very, very quickly. So if you're the type of person that 
cares about the condition of your books, you may not want to opt for the mass market paperback editions, but if you just want to read it and you don't care what the book looks like at the end, um, definitely go for these because like I said, they are very, very cheap. Next, we have the trade paperback editions of these books. And these are the ones that I personally have right now. I actually have a uh, few of them here. So here's the, uh, the first one, second, third <laughs> so and this one this one's huge it's just it's just massive but anyway you get the you get the idea but yeah uh the trade paperback editions are essentially the exact same as the hardcover editions of the books only they are in paperback form they're the same size uh and i actually like the trade paperback editions a little bit better than the mass market paperback editions just because uh, they are, they're produced with higher quality paper and they're quite a bit more durable. And of course they are slightly more expensive than the mass market paperback editions, but again, and that's just because they are produced with better quality. The other thing I like better about the trade paperback editions of the books is that they are a little bit bigger and that means the print is slightly bigger. When you have the mass market paperback editions, uh, they are a little bit more compact and uh, they're just not as easy on the eyes. I have really bad eyes, as you can see, I, I wear glasses, so I really don't like to strain when I'm reading a book. Now you can get the mass market paperback editions of these books in a box set. However, it's they are not these, um, particular editions that are available in the box set. You actually have the UK edition of A Song of Ice and Fire that was packaged all together in a box set. And I actually don't prefer those ones. And here's my reason why. If you look at the box set of the trade paperback editions of these books, uh, you'll see that there's an extra book in there. And that is because this book here, um, A Storm of Swords, is divided into two volumes but the biggest one in the series is a storm of swords and uh, for some reason in the box set they decided to split that book into two different volumes the first one is like steel and snow or something like that or snow and steel and the second one is blood and gold same book same words same everything they are just split into two volumes the order hasn't even been changed i know i've read on some forums some people thought that maybe some uh, the order of some of the chapters were changed in those two different volumes they are not they are still the exact same book they are just in two different volumes of course if a book is available in trade paperback edition clearly it's going to be available in hardcover edition so these uh trade paperback editions that i just showed you and talked about uh, these are also available in hardcover exact same exact same cover art everything only they are hardcover and clearly they cost a little bit more i believe um here in canada they're about 30 bucks a piece the next edition of these books that i wanted to talk about are the hbo tie-in editions and these are the exact same as all the other editions that i've shown you and in this case the difference is that the cover art is different and the cover art is just pictures that are from the show. As you can see here, you have all these cool pictures that come from the show. And I know for sure these are available in trade paperback form, so they're a little bit bigger. Uh, and I think they are also available in mass market paperback edition as well, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong about that, feel free to yell at me in the comments. The leather bound hardcover editions of these books and these come in a box set i do not believe they are sold individually so they're in a box set all of them hardcover all of them leather bound um obviously they're going to cost a little bit more because they are leather bound and hardcover but uh if you feel that this set of books would be right for you go for it and lastly there are the first editions of these books that you can opt to get if you'd like However, you're not going to be able to find these in bookstores because they are no longer in print. They are first editions. A Game of Thrones was first published in 1997, I believe it was, and uh, this edition of this book, I, I can tell you, you will not find anywhere unless you go to a specialty bookshop that specializes in collectible editions of books, or you uh, go on eBay and try to uh, nab a first edition. However, I'm letting you know the first editions are quite 
expensive. These, of course, are not going to be for your average reader. If, uh, if you're a book collector or you're a bibliophile or something and you want to have a first edition of these books and you want to splurge a little bit, by all means, go ahead. But these are definitely not going to be for your average reader who just wants to enjoy the story. So I think that's about it for all of the standard editions of these books that you are going to find. If you're wondering which edition of A Song of Ice and Fire I personally recommend, I'm sure you could probably already tell from how I was talking about the books a little earlier, but that would be the non-box set trade paperback edition. And uh, that is because I just find these to be the most bang for your buck. I When I started reading the books, I had the mass market paperback editions. And like I said, I'm... I wouldn't say I'm a collector of books, but like I, I like my books to be in decent condition because I usually go back to to read them again. So with the mass market paperback edi editions, I, I took as good a care of them as I possibly could and they still got really, really beat up. So I got rid of those, I donated them and um, I picked up the trade paperback editions because I, I really like these and I plan to go back and reread A Song of Ice and Fire uh, again soon actually. As soon as I get through A Dance with Dragons, I plan to go back and reread them all again. I'm sure you've seen some other ones um, that I didn't mention and they do take place in the same universe as A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, however, they, they do not directly tie into the main story. Uh, you have these books here, which are Fire and Blood. Uh, this one here just recently came out in November, November of 2018. I haven't gotten around to reading it yet, uh, but I will get there eventually. And then there's also A Knight of Seven Kingdoms, uh, and this is a collection of three sh uh, novellas that George R. R. Martin wrote. You don't have to read these books uh, to get the main story. You can completely ignore Fire and Blood and the Night of Seven Kingdoms and you would be totally fine. There's also another book called A World of Ice and Fire, uh, which is more of a reference coffee table type book. It has beautiful illustrations in it. I actually don't have it, uh, but I plan to pick it up if I can ever find it cheap or on sale or something like that. So now let's talk about how to read the A Song of Ice and Fire books. Let's get started. This is the letter A. A is for apple. A can make two different sounds. A as in cat. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Don't turn off the video. I know you all know how to read. Yes, you, how do you read it? You just pick it up and read it. But there is a particular way to read it without getting lost in the details or just getting really, really frustrated. Because if you've seen the show, there are probably so many characters and you probably lo kind of lose track of everyone. Well, if you think there are a lot of characters in the show, holy crap, there are even more in the books. I don't think I've ever read a book that has more characters, more plot lines than the A Song of Ice and Fire books. It's just so, so complex. And if you want to get through these books rather easily while learning as much as you can about this universe and the background, um, you're going to have to download an app. The best way that I found to get through these books was to download this companion app called A Song of Ice and Fire Wiki, and it is available on the Google Play Store or on the Apple App Store, and it is free. So you download it, and unfortunately it does have ads every time you uh, search for someone or something. So for example, what I would do is I'd be reading and I'd come across, okay, Sir Arthur Dane. I don't know who that is. So I would go to my companion app, I would search Sir Arthur Dane, and a, a brief article would come up that would summarize who that person is and it would really kind of put it into context for me so I didn't get lost. And the next time that person would come up in the story, I would know who he or she is because a lot of times what these books do is they introduce a character, talk about them very, very briefly, then you don't see them for like 300 pages, 400 pages, or even the next book. And by the time you read about them again, you don't know who they are. But I find that if you search who these people are right away, you and you read a little, little blurb about them, like literally a little blurb like this, you'll have better chances of remembering who they are the next time you come across them. And you're probably thinking, holy crap, are you saying that I have to like read more than these doorstop books to like really understand what's going on in this world? And well, no, you could read the book. If you, if you have like a really good memory and you absorb information really, really well, of course you probably won't need the companion app, but 
I think they said something like the average person only retains 10% of what they read. And I honestly think that's true because that's probably me. Uh, I need the app to kind of put things into context for me. People tell me that they really want to get into the A Song of Ice and Fire books, but they don't know where to start because the task of reading these books is just so daunting. Like these things are all like, they're huge. All of these books are doorstops and they take a while to read. But when someone tells me this, I recommend for them to just put in the time, get this app, look up these characters, and it becomes so enjoyable. The stories in here are unlike any that I've ever read in my life. They're very, very good. And if you really enjoy this show, you will enjoy the books. As always, books are always better than their movie or TV counterparts. So that about does it for our video today. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you feel that I left anything out, please let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.